This is my first vlog. I don't know how long this is gonna last, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot. Come here, come here, get the camera. Get the camera. Get that fire. David, all right, you got it. David, <laughs> David get it off me. David, David, please. Oh my God, oh my God. <gasps> this is a big dream. Bombshell article, an essay during one of his vlogs. I've been really disappointed by some of my friends. Oh shit. <gasps> I'm back. I hope my 200 subs miss me. I love you. If you're not subscribed, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? Today, I'm giving y'all the story of David Dobrik. He had a glorious rise and a hard fall, but his business savviness helped him make money through it all. Born in Slovakia in 1996, David Dobrik grew up in Vernon Hills, Illinois. And at the end of high school, he started to gain popularity as a Viner. He had enough popularity to justify moving straight to Los Angeles after graduating high school to pursue Vine full time. And he brought some of his friends from back home with him. David moves in with another group of Viners who had their own house called the Denny House. David's friends combined with the Denny House created the Vlog Squad. They're all content creators and David was clearly the leader. Inspired by Casey Neistat, David started making vlogs on YouTube that were growing a sizable audience. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try vlogging maybe every other day, every day. Who knows? This YouTube channel would be really beneficial for David when Twitter, who owned Vine, announced that they were shutting Vine down. Many Viners had no idea what to do but migrate to YouTube. David was no different and decided to go all in on his YouTube vlogs. Each member in the vlog squad is sort of their own character in the vlogs. And David, like I said, is clearly at the top. He's in a league of his own. He's kind of the king of YouTube at this time. So Casey is my favorite vlogger on YouTube about two years ago and then I started and I just took over. That was a joke. That would be funny if it wasn't the truth. <laughs> David's style of vlog was very short and sweet. They were four minutes and 20 seconds long. His videos showed the fun of having money in LA and he had a bunch of comedians featured in the vlogs that would do bits to keep things fun and engaging. This is the David Dobrik golden era. He's accepted by TV, even kids networks. He was known for giving away Teslas and he had mainstream celebrity guests in his videos quite often. This left the rest of the Vlog Squad members eager to do whatever they could to ride David's wave of clout and money. And there was a lot of money. I was getting around 60 million views a month. My check each month, a little over $275,000. David created a podcast that was quite popular called Views, and the videos on his own YouTube channel continued to get millions of views. He also dropped a QR code puzzle, which got him some controversy as people were saying that it was a form of gambling targeted towards little kids. So I finally figured out a way to get all of you guys money. I sound like a scam, but this isn't a scam. Listen. Made this puzzle. It's called the hundred thousand dollar puzzle. You get the puzzle. You start building it. It takes a while. How long? Like it takes, really long it takes. When you're done, you take your camera on your phone, just like that, and then you scan it. It's a QR code, and look. Now it'll load your prize, and you're going to hundred percent win. Anywhere from twenty five cents to a hundred thousand dollars. And I won twenty five cents. But he got away with it, and I guarantee he made a lot of money. A hundred thousand of those puzzles sold. A hundred thousand puzzles sold, Jay. David made hundreds of vlogs. At first, he was releasing three a week, but this eventually slowed down and it came to a halt at COVID. This is where things started to really change for David. The pandemic had just started. All of us are kind of just sitting in the house. All of a sudden, we can't film anymore. In response to COVID, David actually decided to take a break with his videos. This was actually a David dub in the public and on the internet. Not following guidelines was seen as pretty selfish and a lot of internet personalities got heat for it. So at this point, David is pretty much universally regarded on the internet as a good guy. He's generous, he's kind. No one really has public issues with him except for one person, Trisha Paytas. Can we just also say we don't actually need gravity? Like, we actually don't need it. What do you mean that we don't need gravity? What if it was never invented? Trisha was Jason's ex, and she was featured in a number of David's older vlogs. At this point in 2021, Trisha is separated from Jason, but she has her own podcast called Frenemies with Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast. Trisha would often bring up that David was hiding a dark side of himself from the internet. However, Trisha isn't really taken seriously at this time, not even by her co-host Ethan. She's popular for her videos of her crying on the floor, and she's had some mental health struggles publicly in the past that makes people dismiss almost everything that she's saying. You oh. really hate David. 
He's a shitty person. I think shitty people who doesn't take accountability. If you're a shitty person, take accountability, learn, and grow, cool. But if you don't take accountability and can just be a shitty person for your life, not cool. But the only the puzzle is the only thing he's ever done that I think oh is shady. My God. Well, there's a ton of there's a ton of things online. You can check it out. He's gross. <laughs> Next. Frenemies gained traction, and with it, so did Trisha's claims against David. Frenemies actually platformed other ex Vlog Squad members to come out and say their own things about David. First with Big Nick, who said that David bullied him in the early vlogs for content. I took a look at a compilation of the first 50 of David's vlogs, and they were full of little person jokes, and Big Nick was like 17 at this time. Yo, Nick, where are we going? Oh shit, hold on. Yo, Nick, where are we going? <laughs> Can I get a picture of you and Big Nick? Nick, you gonna be at the thing? So many Big Nick remakes. That's awesome. Big Nick siblings. Hey, Nick, you're pretty fucking disgusting. Scary. I'm sorry. Yeah. Everyone's just joking about me, like mocking me, then the fans in public are doing the same. I realized right then and there, followers, fame, money, none of this stuff is worth it if I'm getting to the point where like I don't even want to live. The next person who came out against David was Seth, who said that he was sexually assaulted twice in David's vlogs. The first time was a prank where Seth was told that he would be kissing Corinna, but really behind the mask, it was Jason. <laughs> David was able to get Seth to make out with Jason a second time. Do I have permission to try to prank you again and get you to make out with Jason? I'm very confused by that because how the hell could you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not going to know that I'm going to do? <laughs> David takes this as consent and somehow he's able to do it again. <laughs> Maybe a little motorboat over there. Okay, make a crash, make room. Congrats on your commercial, Seth. Seth said that this really hurt his reputation, not only in LA, but back home. The stuff with, yeah. with Jason and, and those bits, one, I did not consent to those things. I did not. David also shouldn't have done it, period. It's not right. So this was getting a lot of attention now as the frenemies audience was continuing to grow and the audience of people against David. And it sort of set the foundation for a huge expose article. A Business Insider article came out saying that David facilitated and filmed an essay in one of his vlogs. Some people argue about who's at fault here and whether David should be blamed for anything. I'm just gonna give you the facts. It starts with Dirty Dom posting an Instagram story inviting girls to have some fun. According to them, it wasn't made clear that their faces would be shown in David's video and what they were really going to be doing there with Dom. <laughs> these girls over to have a five some so hopefully I have a five some oh, oh, this is weird. <laughs> after a couple minutes of talking it was clear there was no five some happening tonight you called it yeah oh well you guys want to watch me and trisha have sex <laughs> but by some stroke of luck and master negotiating dom made progress dom ends up getting two of these girls to sleep with him one of these girls is our victim in the insider article that came out hannah Vlog squad members were peeking inside the room and making jokes about what was happening. Okay, alright, we got, we got three. Oh my god. I'm kinda getting horny just like listening to this. That's what happened. I opened the door and I was like, wow, they look kinda good. Here's a picture that was taken later in the night showing Hannah being held up by her friends. It also gives you an idea of who was still there at this time. Hannah initially texted Dom and said that she was okay being featured in the vlog as long as there was nothing that could hurt her reputation for future employers. Three days after the incident, when David dropped the vlog, Hannah's school and her face were shown, and David apparently filmed this extra part on another day and added it to the vlog, which is pretty gross in my opinion. Shit. It smells like someone was murdered in here. Dom! <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> you are sweating like a racehorse! Was that your first threesome? Yeah, thanks, David. Yeah. Over time, Hannah ends up realizing that she's uncomfortable with the video. So about three months after the incident, she reached out to Dom to get David to take the video down. Apparently there was a slight delay. David had to contact his lawyer to see what the lawyer thought about it. And he eventually took it down. 
Some people argue that David wasn't the problem here. It's Dom. He's the one who actually sexually assaulted the girls. But the Insider article and a lot of people on the internet point out how David encourages this type of harmful activity pretty often in his videos. He saw the girl was too drunk to stand up on her own after Dom's master negotiating, but he saw no problem making this into a video. There's no sex shown in the vlog, but Hannah told Insider what ended up being portrayed in the video about her was totally misconstrued since it doesn't show the extent of her intoxication. When this article came out, the blowback was actually fierce on David. And it was made even worse because David had a terrible first attempt at apologizing where he apologized on his views podcast channel and the whole thing was basically him shifting blame. Consent is something that's super, super important to me. I always make sure that whatever the video I'm putting out, I have the approval from that person. I'm sorry to Seth, Dom and you know, the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself. I've been really disappointed by some of my friends. <laughs> David posted a second, better apology video on his main channel. I was doing all this stuff and I was making all this content while wow, there was people that were still really hurt. But the damage was already done to his reputation. Three weeks later. A year ago, a lot of things happened and I kept them all a secret. Less than a month after the big cancellation, Jeff decides to drop his documentary explaining why he's been off of YouTube and wearing an eye patch in a lot of his videos. We didn't hear about it until now because the entire vlog squad is very hush hush about it. The infamous crane incident. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Vlog squad group text and David was sending in videos from this guy Devin Supertramp. And that was gonna be like the video to like come back and start posting again. It was basically like wakeboarding but in the same place and it looked really pretty on this like beautiful lake and the lake was only like a foot deep. Corinna gets on it and then David starts moving it. It's like this shot looks so sick, this looks beautiful. The thing comes off and it starts falling down and Corinna's like, oh, what the fuck? Put me down, put me down. I didn't know I was gonna go that fast. So I grabbed the fucking rope and I tried to make a goddamn funny video for people. That angle of what you hit would have been about three degrees different. Or if that would have entered about three millimeters higher and been on the same angle, it would have cut your eye right now. In the incident, Jeff hit his eye and he really damaged it. So he had to go through surgery after surgery to get it fixed. But Jeff was still David's friend at this time. I cut during the surgery? What happened? What are you talking about? I don't know. They were still talking and this documentary was not a malicious post against David. I let him pass through the edit of the doc and take out anything that made him look bad. But the documentary certainly had its impact. <laughs> David Hayter sort of shifted on the internet from people who hated him for playing a part in an essay to now a lot of the internet thinking that he's just a psychopath that puts his friends in danger for content. And there were years of footage to back this up. He basically just stayed disappeared out of the limelight until he ended up bringing back his vlogs and then eventually by the end of 2021 bringing back the Views podcast. It's crazy, look at you. You're vlogging? Oh, just a little bit, bro. You look like you need it. You look like you need me to vlog. <laughs> he was filming a travel show on Discovery Channel. His vlogs were still super popular, but Jeff's loyalty changed as he went through the aftermath of this incident. I'm not holding back anymore. Um, I kind of pissed off that, you know, even in the documentary we made, we sugarcoated it. There was so much more that I could have said, but I tried to protect this guy for so long. And he asked, he's like, can you, can, you pro can you promise me one thing? And I said, what? And he's like, can you just promise that no one ever knows that this was my idea? And I was like, absolutely. Bro, and this is complete fucking bro. bullshit. My beef with David, the fact that he is a scumbag friend, a fake friend, now that the documentary's over, doesn't give a fuck, doesn't text me, doesn't check in. Him saying now, flipping the script, saying that, oh, it was fucking Jeff's idea. He's crazy. Complete bullshit. Number three, they were supposed to cover the hospital bills. They slacked because whatever the fuck they're doing, making stupid vlogs, and they didn't pay a fucking bill. I got an infraction on my credit now. I go to get a house, and I can't get a loan. I'm just going to take this the right way, the smart way, and just let the courts decide. 
Jeff Wittig sues David Dobrik in a multi-million dollar lawsuit. This was only the first of two lawsuits that would arise from this because David wanted to use his insurance to pay for lawyers to fight the lawsuit against Jeff. But when they received his request for this, State Farm actually responded by suing David for misusing his coverage because the negligence where this took place was a business pursuit. He had personal insurance, not business insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. So all of this between things going wrong with his return, the Insider article coming out, and then Jeff coming out, David never really had a good time to return to YouTube, and instead he's pivoted towards Snapchat while focusing on his other business avenues. I think one of the big reasons why he pivoted to Snapchat is because on Snapchat he can exist without a comment section calling out for his past grievances, and apparently it's also super lucrative for him. Snapchat is just like the best because I can literally like go about my regular day and just do regular things and it's a lot like toned down whereas a post like YouTube like you're always trying to make sure something's funny and like you're editing and Snapchat is just like you can be more organic. First, there's no way if I was making videos we'd be able to make this. Really? There's no way. So David sort of disappearing from the spotlight and YouTube has left a lot of the other vlog squad members struggling to maintain their millionaire lifestyles without the exposure from David. He walked away from 10 to 20 million dollars. Um, but he didn't I mean, want to do it anymore. So, so he goes, so you gotta spend his wishes. <laughs> Corinna is popping on OnlyFans. Jeff has a popular podcast and so do Zane and Heath. But Jason is begging for galaxies on TikTok. Nah, we need a dino. Official Haunted Beauty. Uh, hey, Jason, when will... <laughs> That's funny. Here's what David has to say about it, though, while he's making bank on Snapchat. Dude, you're kind of becoming a legend on TikTok now. I know. Not, <laughs> not in a good way. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I think it's fun. And I called Joe and I was like, is Jason doing okay? And Joe's like, I haven't seen him on live in a while. And I go, how long has it been? He's like hours and that's just, that's that's when we start to worry that's pretty much everything to this story one thing i want to hear from you guys is do you think david was canceled his reputation is clearly ruined compared to what it was before but you have a big enough audience where you can make millions every single year are you really canceled? I want to hear what you think in the comments down below. One of my last videos got copyright striked and my motivation to make videos died a little bit with that. But I'm back. I'm motivated. I'm going to be back with another video. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Brain fucking smash the brain